Hello, gentle viewers. This is Avendian, welcoming you to Hearts of Iron 4, a new series as Turkey. Hooray! Um, Turkey is one of the more interesting countries to play in Hearts of Iron 4 because it's in such an interesting part of the world where Turkey can very quickly become a regional power with a bit of luck. Um, because there's not much stopping them from taking, say, Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, the rest of the Arabian Peninsula, except for the UK bits, obviously. Um, or pushing into the Balkans, because Bulgaria and Romania and Yugoslavia would largely all be speed bumps. So that's one of the reasons I decided to play as Turkey. The other reason I decided to play as Turkey, of course, is the battle for the Bosporus DLC. It's Bosporus. It's literally uh, this bit right here. Um, for those of you, uh, let me actually remind my history right now. Yes, this is the Bosporus. This is the Dardanelles down here. Um, or otherwise known as the Straits, uh, the Turkish Straits, or the Straits of Constantinople. I keep wanting to use uh, WASD to move the keys. Can I change that? I don't think you can. Oh, well. That's fine. I'll get used to it until I don't. Um, right. So I did a poll and a bunch of people were like, yeah, Turkey seems cool. And I did a comment and people seemed split between Turkey and Greece. And I said I just play Turkey because I wanted to. And sometimes that's all it takes. Um, before we get uh, too deeply started into the uh, game, just a couple of quick reminders. Uh, first of all, uh, we will be playing... Uh, about one hour per episode, um, give or take, because I think that's just a good amount of time to play any Paradox game. I can play it for an hour, um, and then depending on how things are going, I can add a little bit of an overrun. I actually just started the clock right now, by the way, so this one's going to be more than an hour, but that's fine, because there'll be a lot of intro stuff to do. So, let's set the historical backdrop of where Turkey is at this point. Um... Turkey as a concept is only about 12 years old, give or take, at this point. Because until 1924, what is now the nation of Turkey was part of a much larger area called the Ottoman Empire. Um, at its absolute height, the Ottoman Empire stretched basically from India. They had the Arabian Peninsula. They had most of Egypt. They had a bit of North Africa as well. Um and all of Greece, most of Yugoslavia, and a fair bit of... Uh, actually, no, it would be all the way up to Hungary. This would all have belonged to the Ottoman Empire. Uh, the same Ottoman Empire that was knocking on the doors of Vienna in 1683 was defeated, and it kind of went downhill from there. Um... Prior to World War I, Ottoman Empire was known as the Sick Man of Europe, and most people thought that it was only a matter of time before it collapsed. So, in 1915, Turkey decided, sorry, the Ottoman Empire decided to join the Central Powers in, uh, in World War I because they were afraid of Russia, who was in the Triple Entente, rightfully so, um, there are about a dozen wars between the Russian Empire and the Ottoman Empire, and the Russian Empire only lost one of those, which was uh, the Crimean War, and that was only because France and Britain got involved in 1853 to 1856. Um, but back to World War I. Uh, so the Ottoman Empire waited until 1915, and they joined uh, the Central Powers. In order to settle things uh, somewhat, France and Britain came to a secret agreement called the Sykes-Picot Agreement, in which they promised to give uh, the then Russian Empire Constantinople if Russia would help support the invasion of Turkey by uh, sending troops over the Caucasus Mountains and destroying the Turkish fleet in the Black Sea. 
uh, Ottoman fleet, sorry. I will probably confuse those terms several times in this explanation. I apologize. Um, now, if the Russian Empire had lasted long enough, this would have been very good for Russia. And in fact, the commander of the Black Sea Fleet, a man named Alexander Kolchak, had developed a winning plan to use a combined amphibious assault on Constantinople, as well as uh, the Caucasus army, to defeat the Ottoman Empire by taking Constantinople. And it probably would have worked, in all honesty, until this thing called the Russian Revolution happened, the October Revolution. Um, Kolchak, rather than surrender, took his sword and threw it into the Black Sea, saying, basically, if they want my sword, they can go and get it. Uh, and later was a key figure in the Russian Civil War uh, fighting for the whites. But that's enough about Russia. But it is hard to tell the story of the Ottoman Empire without the story of Russia and the story of the country surrounding it. So as a result of the defeat in World War I, the Ottoman Empire is no more. There is a coup in 1924 led by our current leader, Mustafa Kemal otherwise known as Ataturk, the father of the Turks. Uh, he and his army, uh, he and his fellow army officers lead a coup, uh, take over the country, and try to modernize it. He wants Turkey to be more like the West uh, and modernize. Turkey also lost a fair bit of its land, and you can see a lot of it went to France and the UK. Um, Greece was already independent, as was Serbia, by the beginning of World War I, Greece had gotten independence in 1821, Serbia in 1836, but the rest of it gained independence uh, not long before World War I, um, at least in the Balkans, and the rest of it was freed in, as a result of the end of World War I. So that is where we find ourselves right now. It's 1936. It's been about 12 years since um, the Republic of Turkey was founded. Um, before I move on, I have to acknowledge the elephant in the room about Turkey, the Ottoman Empire, whatever you like. Um, the Armenian Genocide is real. And it it drives me bonkers that Erdogan and the assholes in charge of Turkey today keep trying to pretend that it didn't happen. It happened. Um, and in fact, if you need proof that it happened, uh, when Hitler decided to carry out the Holocaust, he was like, yeah, but the Turks killed a bunch of Armenians and no one gave a shit, which was absolutely true, except for the Armenians. Um, and that's part of the reason why the Holocaust happened. So... I'm not going to mention it again, but I just find it incredibly frustrating that a country can deny that for so long. That they can pretend sending, like, however many it was. It was at least 150,000 families, maybe more. Just sending them out into the middle of nowhere to die. And they're like, oh, but that's not genocide. We didn't shoot him. Come on, dude. It's a fucking genocide. You took people based on ethnicity and you killed them. Um, grow the fuck up. Anyway, now that I've lost any of my Turkish viewers, possibly, if I had any to begin with, let's talk about the game. Um, so, with the Battle for the Bosporus DLC, three countries got new focus trees, and they're all neighbors. Bulgaria, Greece, and Turkey. Let's look at our focus tree. Now, the interesting thing about the Turkish focus tree, and I actually took a look at this before I uh, started playing... And there's actually only two focus trees. Well, three focus trees, but two of them are uh, are connected. But one of them is an absolutely gigantic mess, and this is the political tree. Um, the first thing that we would do in the political tree, if this is the route we decide to go... Well, it's actually not a scroll bar. Okay. Is the Montreux uh, Convention, which we say that we want to remilitarize both Straits, the Dardanelles, and the Bosporus, and things will happen. Um, once we've done that, we have a choice to make. We can either continue the policy of etatism, which in other words means we become, we try to become more autarkic, we try to become a little bit more authoritarian, 
we start shifting in this direction. Or we can fully integrate uh, the IS bank. I'm not sure what that means. Um, but in any case, basically our economy, oh, I see, it's basically, this is the classic market economy versus a state-owned economy. Okay, that makes sense. Once we've made this fundamental choice, um, then we can start going down the rest of our tree. And then we basically need to make a decision. Uh, do we want to become more aggressive? Peace at home. Do we want to try to make a pact with Afghanistan, Iran, and Iraq and become more aggressive? We can actually do both of these things. But the next major choice is this one here. And this is basically, do we want to go communist? Um, if we take this decision, uh, the communist party will happen, basically. Um, and then we can either decide to use this revolution to regain Turkish nationalism, or you can use it to try to uh, see a communist uh, Turkey. Uh, which will go quite nicely, potentially. Uh, this also takes us potentially down a fascist path as well. Um, there's some interesting decisions to be made here. Uh, one of the more interesting choices is if we go all the way to... Uh, the other choice we can make once we've decided which basic path we're going to take, uh, we can either go fascist, we can go, sorry, looking outwards actually just looks outside. Um, and this just helps us industrialize. These are all things we can almost always do. Uh, we get to another decision point, which is between these three paths, all of which are um, mutually exclusive. It's actually four paths. So the first is we can pivot to the past. And this is our path to the to a restoration of the Ottoman Empire. Down that tree right there. We have the reconfigured Turkish foreign policy decision. Uh, which gives us the choice of basically going democratic by aligning with the West. We could go fascist by aligning with Germany. Or we can go communist by... Um, by going closer to the Soviet Union. Or we can do all three of them, really. We can go down either tree as much as we want to. Um, the third option is we basically make a local Balkan uh, faction. The Balkan Entente. And this basically means we'll focus exclusively on the Balkans instead of focusing on the Middle East and Asia. Uh, but notice these trees also recon recombine uh, later on. So we can do things like, for example, work on um, the air war to get some of the military ideas later on here. This is a very densely layered and confusing tree with different places that mean different things. Now, the one thing a lot of people want to see is they want to see a restoration of the Ottoman Empire. And I'm already going to tell you right now we're not going to do that in this game. Um, I think it's a little bit too common among uh, Hearts of Iron 4 players. And I personally, look, the Ottoman Empire was on its last legs long before World War One even started. Why would I bring that back? I wouldn't. That seems pretty silly to me. So then the question becomes, which of the other routes do we take? Um, and I genuinely don't know where I'm going to go just yet. And I think a lot of it is going to depend on, a lot of it is going to depend on, uh, what other nations do. Um, I could get on one of the army trees. I don't think it's something I need to worry about right now. So I'm actually going to go ahead and take this decision for the Montreux Convention. Mm. 
So we'll start working on that. That was a lot of intro just to get into the actual playing of the game, but here we are. Um, we're going to pick our research slots. One of the things I don't like about Hearts of Iron 4, and it's really my biggest critique, is that anytime everyone makes the same choice, you know it's not really a choice. And using your first range, using your first three slots on anything but, say, mechanical engineering, machine tools, and construction is just, it's not a good way to play the game. Um, and because it's always the best, I wonder if maybe you should let players start with those techs. Um, or find a different way to unlock them, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, we have uh, 11 civilian factories, of which we only gain 5, because uh, some of them are in use as consumer goods, so we only get 6. Um, the early part of the game is almost always going to be about expanding your factories. So we're going to do just that. Now, something to keep in mind for the future. If at some point we anticipate there being a war with the Soviet Union or a war with Iran, uh, sorry, or a war with Iraq, we 100% need to boof, uh, beef up the infrastructure uh, here in eastern Turkey. So we're going to do exactly that. I would like to get everything in this region up to a 5. Because I think it's pretty likely that no matter what happens, we're going to need to get in deeply involved in Eastern uh, affairs here in Central Asia. And then depending on what strategy we decide to pursue in the Balkans, we can then think about other things here. This red line means it's demilitarized. We can't enter this part of the region because of an agreement at the end of the war. Um, we're apparently making fighters, which would be great if we had rubber or aluminum, which we don't have either. So instead, all of our factories are going to go towards making guns. Free dockyards. I don't really have a need to start working on the fleet just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and build convoys. I'm just going to go ahead and tell my one dockyard, make us some convoys. We only have 20. We're eventually going to need to do trade, so it just makes sense. We're low on manpower. There's nothing I can do about that. Um, who would trade me aluminum? Uh, France would. That'll be one factory. And then let's trade with the Dutch East Indies for one factory. And that'll solve both of those issues. Now, how do we want to configure our army? Well, I mean, I do eventually want to get involved in Iraq and Iran. So we probably want to think about that. If we look at Iraq, they don't have any friends, really. Uh, neither does Iran. And I probably would take Iraq first, in all honesty. Because that opens us to other options later on. Uh, so I think what we're going to do is I think we're going to take this army... I'm going to create a, an army, and I'm going to tell you to set a front line in Iraq. And then I'm going to appoint a Ferretin Altay. I apologize in advance if I get Turkish names horribly wrong. Uh, you should also be in that unit. Ah. I know that there's a battle plan with no units assigned. We'll fix it. Don't worry. Uh, for everyone else, um, I can't really do anything with you yet until I can remilitarize in the Straits. I'm just going to have you hang tight. I'm going to put you in an army, and I'm just going to have you... Oh, you are trained. Which means I can't even put you in exercises, which is unfortunate. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you a leader, and then I'm just going to leave you be for right now. 
Uh, what did you do? Oh, I see what happened. There is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need to go delete, and I need to delete that order. That problem is solved now. Uh, so you guys will be doing your thing. I guess for this army, while we're waiting, I can have you do some area defense. Like that, just to give you somewhere to go. And I think that'll be a good start for the army. With all that done, I think we're ready to unpause. No, we're not yet. I have to describe what we're looking at in terms of national spirits. The first of these is the Kamalist officers. Um, while we have a harder time with army experience, we have more stability and we have a higher max planning speed. We have sectarian woes. Um, until we can settle this issue, um, we're going to have to figure something out. And finally, our armed forces are disorganized. Um, and this is a big, big, big deal. Before we go anywhere in the war aspect of things, we're going to want to shift in that way. But thankfully, our leader is pretty powerful. Um, and he helps offset this somewhat. Somewhat. Let's unpause the game. Uh, as usual, I have historical focus is off, so I have no idea what's going to happen in the rest of the world. But it's probably going to be pretty crazy. Uh, let's look at our decisions, actually. That's another good thing to do. So you have the Kurdish state. Uh, we have the Kurdish state um, management, how we deal with uh, the Kurdish population. About 20% of modern Turkey is Kurdish. And uh, what we can do is we can spend political power once we have it to counter the rebels, uh, which will reduce their chances. Otherwise, in 74 days, this becomes stronger. Um, but we'll have to see what happens. And then we have some other uh, pretty standard things. The thing I have to worry about is our state management. Uh, some people don't like uh, Kamalism. Yeah, here we go. No, we don't. What is it doing? Oh, the decision is a national one here. Um, so we do this, we could try to basically get the traditionalists more on side. Um, let's unpause and let's just let the world happen for a while. I guess I should be somewhat worried about the Navy and the Air Force too, shouldn't I? Uh, we don't have very many, but the ones we do have are all going away. Uh, there's just very little sense to me to be taking these terrible airplanes and having them get better. That's all of the Air Force, right? Yep. Oh, uh, the Navy, we have... Um, looks like we have some early submarines. We have a submarine fleet. We have a Sea Wolf. No, we don't. Of course we don't. That's fine. Um, and then I also have a second fleet. Oh no, that's the same fleet. The same boiled egg. And here we have, um, isn't the Yavuz one of the captured, uh, Russian dreadnoughts? It might be, I can't remember. I think it is, though. Or it might have been a captured, uh, battlecruiser hull. I'm not sure. But in any case, we don't have much of a fleet either. Uh, we'll need to fix that at some point.
in the future. All right. Uh, everything else here looks fine-ish. Let's unpause the game some more. Let's let it. Let's let it ride. Oh, I see. Here's our submarines over here in the Black Sea. But we also haven't remilitarized the Straits yet, so we can't even use the Straits yet. That's some bullshit right there. Okay, things are happening. Uh, we have some resistance to occupation. Uh, I can't really do much about that necessarily right now. Um, I mean, I can basically, actually, I guess what I can do is take you guys off the front lines and just have you work on pacifying this region. There we go. Get to work. Um, that'll help at least. Yeah, the Kurdish resistance is about to get a lot worse. And we need some support equipment. That's actually a good point. Let's go to production and let's start a line of support equipment. And I'm actually gonna prioritize that over replacing these out of date fighters, gross. Uh, but it's gonna take some time before we can even think about that. So we'll have to, to find another way in the near future here. Yeah, Kurdistan is going to be an issue that we'll have to figure out how to deal with. Okay, so Germany has remilitarized the Rhineland. The UK is pretty mad at me. The Soviet Union's cool with it, though. Hooray! Ooh, so the UK is up. Ah, stop. The UK is actually going toward a colonial policy. So we might see seeing some of these British nations uh, becoming independent. We've completed a national focus, and now we need to make our first important choice. Do we want to start leaning authoritarian or leaning more democratic? And I'm going to be honest. Um, so again, I don't know enough about what's going to be happening in the world yet. So I'm, I'm kind of uncomfortable making a giant choice, but maybe I just have to. Like, here's the hilarious thing, right? I can do pretty much everything here. What etatism lets me basically do is, um, oh, I see. So basically the question is, do we want to try to develop this ourselves or do we want to rely on foreign investment? Uh, we could go for a pure democracy. This is the democracy route right here. And then we can let the people decide what kind of issue they'd like to see. I kind of like that idea, actually. I kind of like the idea of just letting the game naturally evolve. And I know this is just economic and like stopping me from picking this and then circling back. So basically, let's look at the two differences here. This gives me free trade and makes my industrial projects cheaper. This, on the other hand, gives me a national spirit, which reduces consumer goods factors and makes everything else better. But it makes these foreign investment projects a little bit more expensive. So I think I'm going to pick this one. Let's the Ish Bank. I think that's how that's pronounced. Do it. We want to be the kinder, gentler uh, Turkey. 
Um, so one of the things I can do right now is I can trigger uh, one of these decisions here, which I'm going to do. No, I'm not. I think I have to click it in here. So I take this decision. Um, there's a chance it will significantly... Oh, no, it would actually lose this. Yeah, the Rebels would pretty much be pretty certain to win. Yeah, basically... Okay, we've got a decent chance of countering them here in Urzurum. It's a basically a coin flip. I can initiate counter uh, things. So this will basically calm the traditionalists down, moving us a little bit closer to ending sectarianism. I can give refuge to scientists. I kind of think we maybe need to start working on the Kurdish problem, though. So I took that decision. We'll see how it plays out. And we have defeated the rebels there. Beautiful. Um, I think there's got to be like something in the focus tree that'll make this a bit easier because right now I don't want to just keep pouring uh, political power into this. Now let's initiate a counter fundamentalist operation that seems good let's try to end some of the sectarianism that we can end okay we've completed our first attack uh let's go right down to mechanical computing you want to get your research bobs nice and early Wait, how can I modify my government so cheaply? Oh, I've got a very, very cheap motorized designer for some reason. Okay. I'll think about them. Uh, for now, I think I'm just going to keep the political power. Uh, so we can try to work on getting the Kurdish rebels to behave themselves. Oh, for and for espionage. I'd have to have five civilian factories, but I kind of think we have to do this. Let's pick this cool looking lion. Um, because I can use uh, espionage to reduce resistance, which is another thing I'd like to do. Try to help get the the Kurds under control. So that is done. And now I have no choice up to ratify the six arrows. Do it. So what are these cool new decisions that I have access to? And how cool are they? I apparently don't see them yet. I wonder if that'll come up later on, maybe. I am now low on steel. Ah. Americans, give me your steel, please. Because we need guns so that we can start filling uh, garrisons. Basic machine tools. Um... Raw output would be lovely, but I like the ability to switch um, different speeds. I 
I think that's the route I probably want to go, right? Yeah, I think I will go uh, dispersed so that it's a little bit easier for us. I do wish there was a little bit more of a difference between those two options. Um, that does create some issues. Second, London Naval Treaty signed. That's fine. Um, I can now, if I actually, you know what I should do? I'm actually going to have you guys bend your orders so that you can come back over here and help with the Kurdish rebels until we can get that under control. Because it's actually the bigger issue right now. Oh, right. I need to fix you, don't I? I've created uh, espionage. And I will get a spot to recruit someone in a day. Uh, I picked the wrong person, I think. No, I didn't. I actually did pick the wrong person. Here you go. Delete. There we go. Off you go. Have a good time, friends. Let's try to, to calm things down as best we can. Oh, I've got a poop ton of political power. Um, let us begin, uh, by continuing to reduce resistance. This is 50-50 still. I'm, I mean, I've got to try it, right? And we've actually been defeated. Um, let's try it again. And we're able to counter them again. What is the current resistance here? It's 13. Um, I think we just have to find figure out another way to take care of the resistance. Because I don't think anything else we do is going to make enough of a difference. Um... Is there a political advisor who would help with that? I do like the idea of a captain of industry, if I'm honest with you. An elusive gentleman sounds quite nice. I'm going to pick my captain of industry here. Let's build stuff a little bit faster. The Congress passed the Neutrality Act. Oh, we've passed construction. No, it actually start with a land doctrine. Now, it looks like my, my base population is pretty low. Um... So we're probably looking at superior firepower. Or we could just try to go for grand battle plan and just plan the shit out of everything. Um... We're in the part of the world where tanks are kind of useless. Um, I'm not, I mean, they're not useless, obviously, but Blitzkrieg doesn't make sense in a place with a lot of mountains. Um, and there's quite a few mountains in our east. Um, Being able to dig in better is actually pretty sweet. 
if we're going to be fighting mostly defensively. But I think there's going to be a fair bit of offense, so we're going to go with Superior Firepower. And you want to get started on those as quickly as you can. All right, we can hire a spy. I have a Turkish Soviet Kazakh uh, national. You're really good at sabotage. Uh, you're a seducer. You're really good at stealing stuff. Um. I'm going to take you just because you have so many nationalities. I'm just going to let you build up your... And then what kind of... Build me an intel network, please. Oh, that's right. Um, where is it? Root out resistance. Get over there. Uh, Ethiopia was defeated. I almost said Italy, or Ethiopia defeated Italy, which would have been pretty funny, but didn't happen. We have ratified the six arrows. Um, okay. So we've got a couple of options here uh, in the political path, and let's think about which ones we might want to do. The first these are the Treaty of Sada Abad. Um, basically, this has us sign a friendship pact with the other nations here, and we can start thinking about that. Um... We can... Oh, I see. That's what those decisions do. Oh, that's very nice. I can use political power to build factories for free. I like that. So if we're going to want to go pure democracy, this is the best route to go down. I don't know that I necessarily want a pack. Maybe I do. Um, makes democracy more powerful and gives me base stability. So you can hold an election if we go down this. I want to modernize Turkey, so we're going to go down this tree for right now. And see where that gets me. What is all this? Um, oh, I see. This is like the different things here. As long as you honor them, it can never be torn apart. So republicanism basically just increases stability. Secularism, there's a 50-50 chance that the Kamalists take over populism. Gives me political power, manpower, and mobilization speed, nationalism. Uh, gives me war support, reformism. Gives me political power and democracy support. And liberalism gives me... Um, a construction speed buff. I'm gonna take that one. Let's get some. Let's get the construction speed buff happening so we can keep building up our industry. That seems smart. There's a Spanish Civil War. The nationalists are kind of in a lot of trouble, actually, the way this broke out. Oh, maybe not. If they can join their two fronts, 
Uh, there go the purges. Then things could be quite bad there. What is going on? Did someone send me a text I don't care about? That's what happened. I thought my phone was reminding me that and almost an hour had passed. Um, okay, our manpower is still low. The Olympic Games are done. Okay, something here is getting ready to expire. Uh, the Kurdish resistance is going to come back again. So as soon as I gain 100 political power, I'm going to use it to try to get these guys to calm down a bit. Oh, maybe not. That's 50-50, 50-50. I could take that decision to get the traditionalists to settle down. But they're not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the Kurds. And too many of these are 50-50 chances. Uh, do it. And we have successfully countered some rebels. Oh, we just completed a new national focus. We're going to cooperate with the debt council. Uh, I kind of want this piece at home. Uh, decision because this will help us calm down the Kurds, actually. Uh, can I hire that guy? Can I hire Ismat Yonu? Where is he? I don't even see him. How do I get that guy? Oh no, I don't think I can do it because, no way, yes I can. Maybe? Or do I need to have a, do I need to have an election first? So I don't see how I get this guy. Uh, let me look for Ismat. Not found. Wait, what was that guy's name? Yeah, I think it's ignoring because I don't have the right characters annoying um yeah i don't know where we get him because until we get him i can't take the peace at home decision which looks like this is the only long-term solution for getting keeping the the kurds calm but maybe there's enough yeah i can also go down this path Um, let's go ahead and take this one here. Let's try to make democracy a bit more popular. So I guess they're going the democratic route. Um, because the quicker we can end our problems there, the faster we can do some other good things. Okay, so here we go. Here are some factories that we can open here. So when I do this, I lose political power gain, um, but I get to basically have a free factory. Oh, oh, that would be great. That would give me steel and a factory.
That'll give me a military factory. Oh, but that makes fascism more popular. I don't want that. Uh, let's do this one. I like the idea of getting some more steel production, too. It does take longer. But I think I can live with that. How is Spain going? Um, it's not quite 1937 yet. Uh, let's do some... Ooh, I kind of like getting a 1936 fighter. But I also don't think I'm going to be in a position to build that anytime soon. I think reinvesting in industry is the way to go for right now. Let's go right to construction two. Start thinking about the 1937 tax. Yeah, I actually think uh, the Republicans are screwed. Mechanical computing is done. Very nice. Uh, I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to research excavation. Try to make the most of our resources. Look, I'm being kind of stupid. I should just combine these all into one army right now. And then there we go. There's just not much of a point to having two separate armies when I'm not defending anything. Okay, we're working on democracy. Because we want a chief editor stream in order to get regional elections and start getting that stuff to happen. Um, cooperate with the debt council. And then we get even more um, foreign investment. Um, let's do this. Let's cooperate with them. Is the DAC Council something I'm actually dealing with right now? Not really. Oh, I see. I'm basically trying to pay off my debt so that the West will like me more. That makes sense. How is resistance coming along? It's not great, but it is at least going down. No, it isn't. I keep running into issues. Okay. Let's get some better deals here. And then we're going to hold a multi-party election. The Bulgarian government uh, supports the IMRO. Uh, this is actually a... The Internal Macedonian Revolutionary Organization is... Is a political movement that basically tries to take land from Greece and re-add it to Bulgaria and Yugoslavia. It's a borderline terrorist group in certain circumstances. But yeah, this is going to make things very interesting in the Balkans. Um, so maybe we actually made the right choice by staying out of it. I'm not sure, though. Um, I'm not going to dive back into this. I'm going to leave this alone for right now so that we can keep investing in our future. Uh, please give me Dispersed Industry too. They basically stirred up people in Yugoslavia and Greece. Greece, I'm asking to return to Turkey. Or... In Turkey, what's wrong with me? Bulgaria. Um, what does absorb the TPDA? Oh dear. Okay, I don't want to do that. That sounds terrible. Uh, 
Um, let's go ahead and trigger reformism. And then I think we're probably overdue to maybe try to crack. No, I'd lose. I'd probably lose. I might lose. It just seems like I'd be forcing political power down a hole at this point. Is there anyone else I can hire as a... As a prime minister. I don't have the war support to change most of my laws. Um, which, you know, it is what it is. There's no one here in particular that I'd like to see. Uh, Rafat is actually just better than the other guy. Oh, you're excellent, actually. You make all my infantry better. I kind of like that idea. Yeah, I don't know what to do about this without... Uh, actually, I guess I do know what I can do about it. I can move you over here. That'll keep that a bit more under control. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and devote some factories to getting better at rooting out resistance for right now. Poland wants Baltic cooperation. They might actually start their own faction as they are wont to do. Up oh, there, they have the Mitzemorze. This is basically Polish for, um, I think, Baltic. Like the North Sea, maybe. I'm not sure. But in any case, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to, to set up a nice little faction. I don't think anyone else has joined it, though. But we're still going to hang tight for right now. Oh, no. Uh, Ataturk has taken ill. Well, I don't want that. Um, let's see what those decisions actually do. Uh, we can retire him. Which would significantly reduce things. Or we can seek treatment. So we kind of need to store up on political power so that we can try to get him treatment. Yeah, I can't spend any political power on anything else until that's resolved. Because we don't want to lose him if we can avoid it. Uh, does anything give me political power? You help. Utilizing... Here we go. So these are the decisions I can do. So basically, I need to make these countries like me more when I get a chance. But for now, I need 125 political power. I 
I've really talked about what we're going to be doing in terms of war because they don't really have the choice yet. We need to focus on getting our house in order before we can even start getting more involved in uh, world affairs. Come on, I don't want to lose Autotork just yet. And look, there's going to be another Kurdish resistance. I can't do anything about that just yet. Just hang on, my dude. Hang on. We love you, Autotorque. You're the dude. All right. Um, I guess we do want excavation too. Yeah, all right. Try to get as many resources as we can. There's a Polish-Romanian alliance. That's interesting. All right, we have 126 political power. Go, Ataturk, go. Oh, no, that takes 60 days. Oh, no, I just wasted my political power. Because I can't do anything to stop this. That's, I mean, it's going to nuke my stability, but stability isn't the end of the world. Oh, the, uh, the anarchists are getting involved, and that's not going to help anybody. It's currently stable. It's going to get worse. All right, let's let's try to have an election. Oh, there is no official opposition party yet. So until then, I can't do that one. Oh, let's go ahead and make the Treaty of Sadabad right now. It is now down to poor. And we finally have an opposition party forming. So this means that uh, next opportunity, let me quickly make a research choice. Um, let's go ahead and take support weapons one. Um, what we're going to do next episode is we're going to organize an election and hopefully get closer to resolving some of our internal issues. Um, actually, let's change. Oh, I can't stop this one? Here we go. Cancel. Oh, really? This doesn't count as an official opposition party yet? Well, then I guess we'll go back to it. Um, right. So hopefully the next couple of episodes here we'll get an official opposition party. There it is. And there's my party. And all of this lovely stuff. So far things have been pretty quiet. Um, I mean there's a Spanish Civil War obviously, but nothing too crazy has happened yet. Uh, maybe that'll change, but for right now, things seem pretty quiet. Uh, but until next time, this has been Avindian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.